The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the June 6th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. How about we have an extraordinary one? Yep, let's have an extraordinary day. And the easiest way to do that it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the buyers and sellers, what the bulls and bears are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but more importantly, I'm here to serve you during this next hour. So feel free to give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, we've got you covered. Let those fingers do the walking. That's right. Send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And, of course, in our Tiger's Den, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, the Dow 76 points. Trade out at 25.615. S&P's up about 7. NASDAQ 100 up about 11. Russell is off 11 points and change. The semis are up 8. New York Stock Exchange of 25 points. Wilshire 35. Transports are down 144 points. They're leading the charge to the downside off 1 and 4 tenths percent. Spot volatility index is uh, hoovering, hovering right around its 50-day exponential moving average line. Right now, trading out at 15 98. Gold's up 990. That's where we're going to begin the day. But first, uh, who's leading the charge? The upside, it's AutoZone, about 20 bucks. Mercado Libre, nearly 10 and change. Tesla, about 9. Sherwin-Williams, 9. To the downside, Gravity Company up, uh, I think it was down yesterday, 16% today, 13 bucks. Booking Holdings off 12. No big deal there. Seven tenths of a percent. So plenty to look at. Of course, what we want to look at was what you want to look at. And the first request came in from uh, Peter in our Tiger's Den. And Peter's asking the question about, a uh, specific question was, can we talk gold? Well, we're going to talk gold. And his question was, did the uh, five-hour chart, 300-minute chart, TD9 count go away? It did not, Peter, but let's take a look at it. But it's long gone, so to speak. Let's put up that five-hour time frame chart. And uh, what Peter is re referencing is that uh, way back here, this is at 4 o'clock in the morning. This is on the trading day of June 3rd. Um, we can see that there were there, there was nine consecutive close on a five-hour chart where the close was above the close four bars prior to that. That. And at that nine count, it's bars eight, nine of the bar following, where we look to see if there is a top or bottom. In this case here, it would be a top. Uh, what we can see here is the bar following bar nine, not labeled 10, but bar following bar nine. Price moved higher right after that, Peter. That told us that the TD set nine count, that there was strong momentum that was not going to identify, identify any kind of a top out there. However, however, however. That's not the issue that's at hand for gold on the five-hour time frame. Instead, what has formed since then has been one of those roads momentum indicator tops. It's simply where an instrument, for whatever time frame, moves higher, does with less relative energy, and then gets confirmed. And there's other things to it. There's a five-step process. I teach subscribers how to do that. And then there is the bearish reversal candle. It took place yesterday at 2 p.m. So right now, resistance for you is going to be the high from yesterday that is at 1348.90. Clear that? That would be a positive thing. Now, you've got a topping signal on the five-hour time frame. We talked about this yesterday. I noticed, Peter, that you also point, pointed out in the den that gold is trading above 1340.40. 40. 
It is, by about three buckaroonies. But, of course, yesterday was day number nine. It may not be that easy to see the nine because of the down arrow that is out there. Uh, but yesterday was day number nine. If um, And that says that uh, unless today makes a higher high, which it could, but unless it does, uh, resistance, you, you, resistance in essence, is the top of that shooting star. Now, all you have to do is go over to the left-hand side of the chart, see the Three River Evening Star, and know the resistance is there as well. And that's actually priced at the high of that pattern. That's that little doji candle, but that's what uh, was following session that set up the Three River. And uh, that's 1355.30. So gold, 1355.30 is a level that needs to be cleared in order to get out of the woods. So you're up at resistance. And that's, in essence, I would say the theme of the show, or at least the beginning of the show today, is everything is up at resistance style or type or pattern uh, areas out there, and that is including Goldilocks. Do you sell gold? Do you short gold? The answer, Stevie, would say, no, you can't do that. Well, you can do anything you want. I would say you shouldn't do that. Why would I say you shouldn't do that if I'm saying, hey, there's problems or potential problems in River City? The reason I would say that is you need to see some type of level of support being broken. And for me, that level beyond profiles out here would just simply be would be in this 30 minute time frame by the way the number is 133530 that's where gold most recently broke out when i say breakout what we're referring to is in order to have the strength to have nine consecutive closes above the close four bars earlier that is where you see a concerted effort by bulls to make the run what we don't know is if price pulls back to that area, are those bulls still ready to make that run as price is coming back to support the breakout area? So you can't or you, sh you shouldn't. It's 1335 or 1343. You should not change course if you're long precious metals, well, specifically gold. We're talking about gold or, or really the mining equities out here. You need to see a break of support. And, Peter, I don't see it. Up at resistance? What action do you take? If you're long, you say you stay long. If you're not long, you don't get in now because you're up at uh, resistance and you wait to see if there is a pullback if support gets broken. So does that does that help you out, uh, Jay, with regard to what uh, Goldilocks is doing? Finally, uh, we'll put the, uh, the, the finishing touches on that. Uh, by taking a look at gold trading into its weekly profile, the top of the weekly profile, I should say, that's 1341.50. So we know there's lots of resistance up in this range between this 1340 level and I think it was 1350, what was it, 1353.80. That is your resistance zone for Goldilocks. Hope that helps you out. Now, I had mentioned that the theme really of this morning should be resistance. Well, not that it should, it, it is. What do you mean? Well, if we just simply take a look at the way that the market is trading and where it's trading into, we can just go take a look at the ES Mini as an example. And here, well, we have our daily, our weekly, and our monthly horizontal trading range levels. You'll see that I've got three different colors, red, green, and blue. Blue is the daily, green is the weekly, red is the monthly. Price, the ES Mini that is, made its way up to 2840. 2840 is a weekly horizontal trading range boundary line. Price is up at resistance, trying to figure out its next move. That's the ES Mini, the S&P 500. We'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien have just announced a special webinar on June 19th for all subscribers to the TAS Profile Scanner. Steve and Tom will break down the trade matrix, market breadth, heat grid, as well as the three-step process you can use with the TAS Profile Scanner to identify market movers and how to capitalize on that move. For all the details and to get started with the TAS Profile Scanner today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. Go sign up today. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we were talking about resistance as we were going into that break. We were taking a look at the ES Mini. We'll take a look at the two other equity futures contracts. You'll see really the same thing going on here. Here's the NQ. Uh, 72.39 and change is the uh, daily horizontal trading range level. We can see how price is stalled there. And so it's making a determination. It's just maybe it's just resting as it knows that it's at resistance. That's the ES Mini. That's the NQ out here. And if you can clear those hurdles, then it moves up to its next horizontal trading range level. So what you're experiencing, what you're seeing today, a little jostling around uh, is to be expected and anticipated as you run into resistance. If we take a look at the uh, Dow, here's the third one. Now, the Dow itself is showing a bit of strength. The Dow is uh, making a move above 25,558 or 25,629. So it's got a mind of its own. It said uh, resistance, resistance something like that. You kind of get the picture. So the Dow is saying, I want to make a run for 25,855 out there. If we go take a look at the Dow equity futures contract, remember 25,855. If we look at the Dow, 25,779 is the top of that box. So there's your range for the Dow's next move out here. By the way, for the ES Mini, uh, it wants to poke its head and go check out 28,45. Whether or not it takes out that plateau, I don't know. But it's the race between the the Dow and the ES Mini, they're going to be first up or should be first up to their resistance level. It's not going to be the Russell. It's not going to be the NQ or it's not likely to be either of those. So we want to go ahead and continue to pay attention to both the ES Mini and the uh, Dow and uh, watch uh, how they respond when they get to, in the case of the YM, the Dow Equity Futures Contract, its next resistance level. That's 25.7. 79 out there. If we take a quick peek just to get the uh, health of the uh, market out here, uh, we'll go check in with the doctor. The doctor says, hey, let's go take a look at the New York Stock Exchange. This is Dr. NYSE. And what we can see out here, it doesn't look good. It looks like uh, and this this is signaling a bit of a retracement. Uh, to uh, to take place or, or possibly take place. Let's see what the end of day reading. But you can see how the advanced decline oscillator turned down right below zero. Never really a good sign out here. We'd say it's an okay sign as long as the spot volatility index closes below its 50-day exponential moving average. That's priced at 1590. 
We're trading at 16 buckaroonies, one dime. Does one dime make a difference? Yes, makes all the difference in the world. So with regard to the health of the New York Stock Exchange, it's got a cold right now. I don't know if this is just a one-day cold, if this is just a little bug, or if this is the real thing. What do you mean the real thing? You know, a uh, retracement, a pullback. Maybe in the end, maybe even the end of a counter trend rally, although I don't think so. But we have to be on guard. Doesn't matter what I think. It's all about what do the chart patterns say to you and I. And that's what uh, we uh, do around here. So let's go take a look at the uh, first email request. Uh, this one coming in from uh, John in Sarasota. John writes in, good afternoon, Steve. Good afternoon, John. John says, which direction do you think the XLE is headed in? Uh, so let's go take a look at the XLE. That is the energy sector for the S&P 500. And John, there's really a couple things that you and I need to do if we're going to evaluate uh, the XLE. Uh, I, I'm not pulling up the correlation chart, but we know uh, the direct correlation between it and the price of light sweet crude. So let's first check in on light sweet crude. And here's what we can see out here. We can see that uh, it's in an A to B equals CD to the downside. That's light sweet crude. That is black gold Texas T. What we can see is prices made the one to two a to B equals CD. That's at the 51.28 level. We're at 51.47 as we speak. Now, if you were a reader, an avid reader of the art of timing the trade, I don't know what page it's on, but there's a page that says hey, when you do a one to two A to B equals CD, you're likely to do something else. Now, those are verbatim or sort of verbatim or paraphrase, but from the words of uh, our fearless leader, Obi-Wan Kenobi out there. So you've got a one to two A to B equals CD inside of light sweet crude says be careful now that doesn't mean because i'm sure there was an asterisk inside that book on that specific sentence that said well you could go to the 2.618 expansion so wait for one of stevie's bullish reversal candles before you're ready to say the one to two a to b equals cd is a bottom and this is what we mean out here when we take a look at the july contract for light sweet crude do we see a bottom we do not just yet. However, the timing of your question is marvelous out there. It's kind of like a setup. What do you mean a setup? Well, remember in the TD setup nine count pattern, in this case here, moving to the downside, nine consecutive closes below a close four bars earlier. Well, we got that pattern a couple of days ago. And yesterday, should have been, may have been that wash out low to the downside because that was the bar following bar nine. So, John, in Sarasota, yesterday's low may have been the low. What you'd now like to see is some type of bullish reversal signal out here. Doesn't look like we'll get it today. Maybe we get it tomorrow. Maybe we don't. Until we get it, price can continue moving to the downside. But the daily chart for light sweet crude is saying be on the lookout. Be on the lookout. B-O-L-O. -O, that's right. Bolo uh, instead of BOGO. Uh, be on the lookout for a uh, bottom inside of light sweet crude. Well, if you're going to get a bottom inside of light sweet crude, you're going to get one inside of the energy sector, the XLE. Um, it did not make those bottoms. There's an A to B equals CD here. It's a different A to B equals CD pattern than that from uh, light sweet crude. It's A to B equals CD pattern. It completed or very close to it back on May 31st out here. And in the case of light sweet crude, the very following day on June 3rd, you got a bullish reversal signal. Now, price is above Stevie's red line. It's at about 6031 is the uh, number out there. Uh, so the XLE is saying, hey, I bottomed. But John, I say, or I suggest, that what you do is you wait for light sweet crude to give you that same bottom signal before pulling the trigger here. If you do get that bottom, then I would anticipate that light sweet crude and the XLE will rally for a week or so out there, at least rally up into the uh, price point in the XLE, that is. Its breakdown took place out here on May 22nd, and that price level was 64.28. So hope that helps you with regard to what Lightsweet Crude is doing. That's going to help you with regard to what the 
energy sector for the S&P 500 is doing as well. Looks like we've gotten all the questions. Phone lines are open, 877-927-6648. Email lines are open. Uh, I do get an email here from Mosquito Trap. Um, no idea why I got that, but uh, uh, but I did. And, of course, inside the Tiger's Den, just feel free to just go ahead and uh, uh, let me know what chart it is that I can post for you. So right now we got the Dow up 85, S&P 7, 666. That sounds very devilish out there. NASDAQ up 9. It's the Russell 2000. That's a little bit weak out there. Any patterns inside the Russell 2000? How do we know that? Look at that. Beautiful. Did I say beautiful? Beautiful. TD set up nine count. Thus far, that has identified the bottom. That's what the short-term time frame charts for the Russell 2000. That's its message to you. 126 in the afternoon. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best in what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. I must have been a mind reader, um, which is kind of weird, uh, but uh, because uh, Lee B. sent in the following question. Hey, Steve, the IWM is definitely stalled. Can you give me your thoughts on where we are going short term? And as we were going to that break, I had just pulled over the 30-minute chart for the Russell 2000 equity futures contract. So, Lee, at this stage here, 
Uh, my assessment at 130 is that the uh, Russell 2000 uh, short term bottomed, and it did that at 12 noon as it was completing and forming that TD setup nine count. Now, look, it's not a guarantee. And then where's it headed to? Well, it's going to head back up to resistance. That resistance would be uh, where this little nine count began. That was at 830 this morning. That high is 1513. That's the level that you'd like to see price take it, uh, price. That's that's a level of resistance you would like to see fail. But then there's a secondary level of resistance. That's the high that took place at 730 morning on the 5th of June yesterday. That price is 15, 16, 20. Now, if price uh, doesn't move higher and instead moves lower and takes out the low, then price is coming back to this uh, horizontal red line where that breakout began to the upside. And that price point is at 1481.70. You asked about short term. Those would be the short term numbers that I would be focused on because I am focused on them as well. But this stage here, um, you know, so you've got my short term uh, numbers. I hope that helps you out. Uh, if not, uh, let me know. Now, with regard to its market profiles, that's the right hand panel of the chart. You can see that price is trading. This is the daily time frame now. So we went from a 30 minute to a daily time frame. Here you can see the top of the box at 1526, the bottom of the box at 1470, and the centers pretty much in the center at 1502. So you know where your level, your larger term level of support and resistance are inside the Russell 2000. And now you know what's going on a short term wise out there. And again, Lee, you got to put all this into perspective. Everything is up towards really resistance. Uh, which makes a lot of sense, uh, especially after the big move off of the uh, bottom that, in essence, began on Monday uh, in earnest on Tuesday. Uh, good follow through on Wednesday. And now today, just trying to figure out how it wants to go ahead and tackle these resistance levels. So I hope that that helps you out. Uh, this uh, rally should continue for um, a few weeks. Um, but we'll take things one day at a time. Our role is just simply to read the message of the markets. But that is the message of the markets as we speak right now. So no other questions that we've got inside the queue at 133. I don't know what we do with the next uh, 27 minutes out here. But, um, uh, Den, fire them up. Let me know what it is that uh, you want to uh, take a uh, look at. In the meantime, let's go look at some of the uh, equities that are moving and grooving. AutoZone. AZO is the uh, ticker symbol. Let's try to get a feel for where it is headed to. Let's look at our three time frames out here, daily, weekly, and monthly. And, of course, we can also get the quarterly set of profiles. But, boy, AutoZone yesterday uh, taking out resistance, that being the daily um, uh, uh, profile level of 1060. And then look at that shooting star out here on May 28th. That high is 1081. You're at 1090. Uh, you can see resistance taken out on the weekly base. That was 1074, well above resistance monthly and quarterly. So that looks mighty darn good. Let's pull over the daily time frame chart. The other daily time frame chart, we don't see any topping signal. Well, let's go look at the daily volume. What is it? Today is 179,000 shares so far versus 521. So, uh, so it seems like it might be light in the loafers for the confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. Uh, but the non-confirmed version would take us to a price point of, let's go take a look at that, drum drum roll Johnny. That would be 1121 to 1151. The first one was the 1 to 1. The second one was the 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD. Here's what we know about AutoZone. Volume or not, it's trading above all kinds of resistance out there. And that is a bullish outcome and therefore it should be targeting 1121 to 1151 azo being its ticker symbol also moving to the upside you've got lending tree t-r-e-e -E is the uh, ticker symbol out there let's go ahead and get that up on our three time frames get a feel for what it is doing or where it's headed to also above its daily profile out there and taking on a prior swing point that swing point was from the trading session of may 6 had volume there of 217,000. you're already at 110 so that's a beautiful thing now the high that you're looking for it to clear and close above is 400.95 or 400.30. You're uh, trading right into it. 404 was it? Uh, 404.40, right in the top of its uh, monthly 
uh, TAS market profile. So you can see the resistance of the prior swing point on the daily, on the weekly, on the monthly, uh, monthly, um, you know, too, too early in the month to really gauge volumes out here. But we do know resistance at 404.40 out there. That's the level, 404.40. Stevie says price needs to clear in order for it to continue to move higher. And what we can see out here on the daily basis, price is beginning to move higher, doing less relative energy out there. Should a bearish reversal candle form, price ought to pull back to that breakout area. That was on April 16th, that low 358.10. That would really be a level of support on any kind of uh, pullback uh, lending tree up at resistance. Let's go look at something that's breaking down. Let's go look, is it this gravity? Or is was that the one that just, yeah, it's grab, uh, G, uh, we didn't look at it. Um, G R V Y, almost gravy. The gravy train doesn't look like a gravy train, but man, let's go turn it into a gravy train out here. Uh, pulling back today, the volume on it so far about 167,000 shares, but you can see pulling right back into and testing the bottom of its weekly profile at 61.40. Let's go over to our other charts here. Let's put up, uh, oh, what was it? G R what? G G G R V Y gravy, of course. But let's look at it this way. It might be a little bit easier for everybody to see daily, then weekly, then monthly profiles out here. So we know about the uh, weekly time frame. Let's go put up the weekly time frame. Let's go take a look at it. I'm sorry, this is the daily time frame. Um, Here's what the daily time frame, this chart, this is the daily time frame chart. Here's where the breakout began. This looks like where gravy, gravity is pulling back. You can see it made that Rhodes Momentum indicator top. That was confirmed by that bear, bearish engulfing uh, candle uh, back on April 25th. Now price is pulling back to where it had broken out. That was on April 27th. That low out there is 57.50, 57, 50. 57, 50 out there is where the gravy train or gravity looks like it's headed back. Too. Although there could be even more trouble for this equity. Why do we say that? Well, this uh, has a, at the st this stage of the game, it's early part of June, but it's got that bearish reversal signal out here. TD set up nine count potentially, but it's got the Rhodes Momentum indicator at that bearish reversal signal. This thing gets below 56.71. Gravity will have lost its gravity to the upside, and the gravity will be heading much further lower. What else do we have that is moving and uh, grooving out here? Well, whatever it is we've got, we're not going to get to it. The reason being, we're headed into that next hard break in about uh, 10 seconds. So the Dow's up 83, S&P 7, NASDAQ up 10. The thing to be watching today, folks, Spot volatility index. Again, that 50-day exponential moving average number, that's coming in at 1590. You're at 16 buckaroonies. 1590. You close below that, signals uh, continue to move higher in the S&P 500. Right. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. 
From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back. Uh, Dow's up 87, S&P 7. Uh, question inside the Tiger's Den coming from John in Philly. Wants to take a look at uh, two stocks, uh, Walmart and I think it's Shopify, S-H-O-P. And the question is, uh, both are in extended bull runs. What price, if broken, suggests the end of the rally trend? So in the case of Walmart, John, uh, if we come back and take a look at the daily profiles, uh, its level Oh, waste management? Oh, sorry, waste management, waste management. Um, what am I thinking? What What am I thinking? The green machine out here. So sorry about that. But at WM, uh, it sounded like it could have been Walmart. Uh, but WM, waste management. We got the right chart, so that's okay. It's just uh, Stevie can't even read out here. Right in front of you. That's called a scotoma. Uh, but uh, here's what we know about uh, waste management. WM is a ticker symbol. John, the, the way that I would answer that question right now, its first level of support here would be the top of that daily profile, 109.99. I would say price would have to break below the bottom of that daily profile, 108.29. Now, where Walmart broke out was on the trading session. We used that TD setup nine count of May 10th. And that then gives us the uh, level of um, 104.60. So those would be the levels where price would need to close below to say that the uh, trend is over. But if we take a look at this stock right here, I was trying to figure out, well, where the heck is this thing going, right? Because it's up above all those profile levels. But where is this thing going? And the only way that I could really do that with a stock like this was to go back and take a look at its horizontal trading ranges. And voila, that's what we have done. And today's theme is, hey, markets are making their way towards resistance. And that's what we can see here in the waste management chart. That resistance level, 114.01, the high so far, 113.50. That's the weekly horizontal trading range boundary level. If price is able to get above that, then the 126, 128 level would become its next price target area. I hope that helps you out. The next question was, uh, our next equity was Shopify out here. Yeah, it's, it hasn't uh, it's been trading, you know, since about 2015. The monthly chart here is not really going to give me great market, make great horizontal trading ranges, at least weekly and monthly. Just too much of a rocket ship, so not much in the way of pullbacks out here. So we're going to have to go resort on shop is it shopify let's go see if that's who it is it's s-h-o-p it is shopify and now you're asking that question what level needs to be broken through to say that there's a change in trend really the same kind of a thing as waste management we'd have to look to the top of the daily box 258 31 quite a bit lower than where it's trading right now in the case of shopify 
uh, what I would be paying attention to is that price on a daily basis is moving higher, doing less relative energy out there. So if there were a bearish reversal signal, that would be your first indication of some type of pullback. We did see that pattern out here uh, complete, and we've seen it twice. Uh, we saw it uh, complete um, that the road, road's momentum indicator top of May 24th, but price found support at the top of that daily profile. Happened again on the 29th when the 30th generated a bearish reversal signal. And again, price found support at about that 268.31. So um, another bearish reversal signal, I'd watch that 268.31 level to see if that continues to hold as a support. The weekly and the uh, Monthly time frames don't show any topping signals or patterns out here as we speak. So uh, strong like bull continues to be strong like bull. And those would be the levels that I would be watching, specifically the 268.31 or really the low of June 3rd at 262.17. Hope that helps you out. Thanks for writing in and, uh, and uh, correcting me as well that that was not walmart but instead waste management tim writes in and says steve two questions uh, apparently we've got the two for hour going here which is just fine with me where's the money coming from uh for the s p overseas or oh maybe this is the choice i get a multiple choice of questions has xec bottom and where's an entry point let's go with both uh, out there the money from overseas is uh, coming from uh, europe primarily from uh, Europe out there. Um, and and we know that, how do we know that? It, I, I would pull up a chart, but it may take some time. I'll do it during the break out there, Tim, or I'll try to do it during the uh, break. But uh, it's, it's every, it, big European money is trying to find a way to get their money out of Dodge. That's people in the UK, it's people in all over Europe out there. And all that money is flowing into U.S. dollars. The, people will take a look at the U.S. dollar index and see it's down 416 ticks at the moment. But uh, you and I, we are, we're, we're smarter than that. We say, well, go take a look at treasuries out there. Take a look at treasuries. You want to see how you get money from euros into U.S. dollars or yen into U.S. dollars or any currency into U.S. dollars? Go buy treasury bonds out here. Really, I mean, just simply, that's what you do. And that's what's taking place in uh, pound sterling and yen and euros and dollars. Uh, so it's coming into U.S. assets out there and U.S. dollars. Uh, so there's the answer to your first question out here. I do have, I've do. i got a chart that would really even prove it to you more. Um, but let's go take a look at the second question here, which is, because uh, we love spotting good bottoms out here, and that's ticker symbol XEC. And We've got the tools to do it. So let's go take a look at XEC, see if we can go spot a bottom for uh, Tim. Now, that's a Cy Merrick's energy out here. We take a look at the daily. We take a look at the uh, weekly, and we take a look at monthly. There's not anything here, Tim, that looks good. Uh, what we mean by that is prices trading below all profiles out there. And now what we can see on a weekly chart, really, and a monthly chart, we can see prices now attacking a swing point. That swing point is from the trading week of December 24, 2018. That number is 55.62. You're at 55.50 as we speak right now. The volume back there on a weekly base was 6 million shares. You're at 5.1 today. Um, this thing looks like it's pushing into that swing point with volume. And if it closes below 55.62, it says it's got further to run. However, and this is the however, we know we're up at support. Maybe, Tim, this support level holds 55.62. I presume that's one of the things that you're looking at out there. So how are we going to know if that is going to be a bottom, at least a viable trading bottom out there? And the answer is we're going to watch the low of today. If the low of today, no, I take that back. It was yet, uh, that was yesterday that should have been the low. And we're below that low out there. So you want to find a bottom? I say you've got to be patient now because that TD setup nine count also did not identify a bottom or pushing a swing point uh, with uh, with some volume out there on a weekly basis. I think you've got to be patient. Now on a weekly basis, what we can see out here, Tim, is price is moving lower, doing a less relative energy out there. If you were to get a bullish reversal candle, then you could see at least some type of counter trend rally. That would be on the weekly chart. You would be looking for that. We don't have that as we speak. 
And as we look at the uh, monthly chart, just to see if there's any kind of bottoming signal out here, we see how it made a top. It did it on count nine, count Dracula nine of that TD setup nine count. Now, this is a bummer because on a monthly basis, price this month, this, this month exceeded wave number seven, letter G, singing in the key of G. Timmy, I think I can call you Timmy because you can call me Stevie. Uh, there's something wrong with Simarix or Simarix Energy Company. Probably best to stay away. Danger, Will Robinson. Hope you're right. Basil Chapman has a special subscriber webinar coming up Wednesday, June 12th at 5 p.m. called The Tide. In this webinar, Basil will be demonstrating techniques that can help one identify whether the tide is coming in or going out. That is, whether a trend is bullish or bearish in a variety of time frames. And Basil will be speaking specifically to indices, currencies, commodities, interest rates, and key stocks. The technical tools that Basil will be discussing are available on almost all software packages that will be shown in historical context as well as live for current market setups. Identifying the key trend allows one to trade with the tide rather than against it. Subscribers also gain immediate access to three archived workshops so you can get started right away when you sign up. For all the details on the opening call and Basil's upcoming subscriber webinar, The Tide, this coming Wednesday, visit the front page page of TFNN.com and sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South Africa. African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let Gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated traded fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, a couple of quick, well, one, I did find that chart uh, or, or set of tools. We'll take a look at that as we go into the close. But let's get to this question. This came in uh, from Stephen. And uh, Stephen writes in, I'm in AT&T with a, a gain. Is uh, AT&T going to continue moving higher from here? Is it going to drop? You know, if we look at the longer term picture, Stephen, first, um, we were looking at Simerex earlier. We were noticing a monthly chart how HID had formed a TD setup nine count. Uh, so did AT&T on a monthly basis back in July of uh, 2016, I believe it was. Let me see, 2016. Now, if we if we start doing our wave counts, that's a Chapman wave count. 
out here it's not the Chapman wave pattern, but just the wave counts. That's the same. In fact, Basil's got a workshop coming up, and I suggest that you go take that, uh, attend that workshop and, and learn his system out here. But you can see that what AT&T did when it made a bottom, that was wave number seven. That's letter G out here, unlike Samaric. So you've got a bottom from a monthly basis, but, of course, we can see it hasn't really done a lot. Um, you know, kind of trading sideways. -ish. We do like that it's above 3103. That's the monthly Stevie red line out there. On a daily basis out here, just to, uh, you can see right now it's in between profiles of 3160 to 3242. Looks like price is headed to 3242. We like how the pullback out here, uh, the pullbacks have come back to support. The first pullback was the breakout that began on March the 11th. The second pullback, that began out here on May the 14th. And a few days ago, on May 31st, when price moved lower, it was right into that pullback area. We like the mere fact that two days ago you got a little bit of a hammer candle, some follow through to the upside. So where price is headed to at this stage, I can't tell you that it's going to bust out um, of this sideways-ish style range, but it should head back to 3240 too. So hope that helps you out. Now, with regard to the global flow of capital, the real big victor since the uh, March 09 uh, bottoms out here, that's 40 quarters ago, has been uh, the uh, Dow priced in great British pounds, up 407%. That's versus 307% if you're in U.S. dollar terms. In yen, 356%. In, uh, oh, it's 428%. My apology in pounds. 407% in euros. USA, baby. USA. Hey, stay tuned. David White's up next. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care.